class. D.L. DL Moody did. He was. He, he said when he was in Boston, he used to attend a, a Sunday school class, and one day he remembers his teacher came around behind the counter of the shop that he was at work in and put his hand on his shoulder and talked to him about Christ and his soul. Well, Moody said he'd never felt that he had a soul till then, and he said to himself, this is a really strange thing. Here's a man who never saw me till lately, and he's weeping over my sins, and I never shed a tear about him. But I understand it now, and I know what it is to have a passion for men's souls and to weep over their sins. Uh, he says, I don't remember what he said, but I can still feel the power of that man's hand on my shoulder tonight. <clears throat> well, let's, let's pray. Lord God, we pray for the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is your very image, to be made known to those who are lost. Draw them to yourself as we seek your face and ask that in your mercy you will move to re re remove what is ever, whatever is blocking their minds to receive the gospel. Let, let them see the futility of going their own way and the blessing of embracing the life-giving Savior. Show us how to help people draw closer to you. And that's what we're talking about is the lost sheep tonight. Today. Today. Uh... If a man hath a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and go into the mountains, and seek that one which is gone astray? It's Matthew 18, 2. So, we find this very, it's, it's just a simple parable, or really more of a germ of a parable, you might say, uh, in, in a, a seed of a parable, in, in a somewhat more expanded form, in a, uh, the first of three parables in the 15th chapter of Luke's gospel. So, so there's two versions of it, and we're, we're really kind of basing this on this first one, because this, this is about as far as really we need to go, as far as uh, uh, the structure for what i got to say. Now, Jesus, he might have repeated this parable more than one time. Uh, it's, it's, in it, we can see into his deepest into his heart and uh, find a revelation there from the heart of God. This parable touches on the deepest things in his relationship to us and it sets forth thoughts about Jesus such, such as we probably never dared to dream. And it does, does this all by the simplest image and by an appeal to the simplest instincts. See, the, the most straightforward shepherd looks for lost sheep. And, and everybody uh, has, don't you experience a particular joy when you've lost something and you find it? I mean, that's just a universal feeling right there. Now, they may not be uh, so valuable as the things that were lost. Uh, the strayed, the unstrayed may be a lot and the strayed might be but one but there's still there's that 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 sharper joy in the recovery of the one than in than in this unbroken possession of the 90 and 9 now that feeling uh in a person might only be selfishness but 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 it, it's a uh, it, it's it it strikes at your heart it really does and when the loser is God and the lost are men, it becomes the means of uh, illustrating that truth concerning God, uh, which, which really no other religion but the cross has been bold enough to proclaim, that he cares most for the wanderers and rejoices over the return of the one that went astray more than the ninety and nine that never wandered. Now, uh, there are some some significant differences between uh, this edition of this parable in Matthew uh, and the form that it takes in the Gospel according to Luke. Um, in in the Gospel of Luke, it's spoken uh, as kind of a vindication of Jesus consorting with publicans and sinners, where here. It, it's it's told in order to point 
point the lesson of not despising the least and most insignificant of us, of the sons of men. Now, in this parable, we all know who the seeking shepherd is. It's Christ. It's obviously Christ. And here the seeking shepherd is is uh, uh, the, the uh, divine Father, God. As it appears in the words of the next verse, For it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Uh, so, there the sheep are lost. But here, uh, the sheep just go astray. So, there the shepherd seeks until he finds, and here the shepherd uh, maybe fails to find. For, or, you know, Jesus said, if so be that he finds it. So the two parables are different in that one is Jesus looking for the lost sheep. And, and in, the God, in the parable in Luke, it's God seeking the lost sheep. <clears throat> but, you know, we're not going to go into the, the, we're not going to delve deeply into that today. Uh, but we need to look at the two figures the wanderer and the seeker. First, let's look at that, that figure of the one wanderer. Um, now, the immediate application of the parable in Luke's Gospel, the 90 and 9, were respectable people who thought that the publicans and the harlots were, were, were just altogether too nasty to be messed with, you know, and regarded it as, as doubtful conduct on the part of this young rabbi from Nazareth to be mixed up with people, uh, with, you know, people didn't have a proper regard for the white as sepulchers, you know. Uh, and he answers them in effect that he's a shepherd. Jesus tells them, I'm a shepherd. This is my vindication. Of course, a shepherd goes after, and he cares for lost sheep. He don't ask about how much the sheep's worth or, or anything else. He just follows the lost one because it's lost. And, and it may be a poor little creature, after all, but it's lost, and that's enough for him. So he, he vindicates himself to the ninety and nine. Y you don't need me. You're found. Uh, you know, I take I take you on your own estimation of yourselves, but but, you know, my mission is to the wanderers. Now, I don't. Th I don't think that any of us have a need to be reminded that on a closer and deeper look into the facts of this, every hoof of the ninety and nine belonged to a stray sheep too, didn't they? And that all men are wanderers. And in, in a, if you take a wider application of this parable. Remembering then this universal application that, that all men are wanderers, uh, we need to point out two or three things about the condition of these strayed sheep, which include all of the sons of God. The 90 and 9, <clears throat> it may shadow for us a number of, of beings uh, in there may be um, there's there's well there's un, unmistakably been more people lost in the past than been saved, um, but that really doesn't concern us in this parable. Now the the first thought that we could get from this parable is that all men are Christ sheep, and it sounds a strange thing to say. Uh, all these men and women who have run away from him are plunged in sin like sheep that just fall off into an old black bog, you know, the scoundrels and the profligates, the scum and the outcasts, you know, of society. Uh, and, well, there's another trail I really don't want to go down to. But uh, there's people that, that don't know of Jesus and, and his love. Are they his too? Well, let Jesus answer this. Other sheep I have, you know, even though they may look like goats, uh, which are not of this fold, also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice. All men are Jesus's, because he's been the agent of divine creation, 
and, and those words that we, we speak about the, in the 100th Psalm are true about him. It is he that hath made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. See, they are his because his sacrifice has bought them for his. If they stray, if they err, if they're lost, they still belong to the shepherd. Notice, notice uh, this picture of the sheep as wandering. The word is literally uh, which goeth astray, not which has gone astray. See, the, the, it, it, it shows us a picture of wandering, not the result as accomplished. And, and I could really relate to this because I've done exactly what these sheep did uh, when I was a boy. I'd get off into the woods and, and I'd wander and, and see these sheep, they're doing the same thing. They're, they're, they're just silly. Sheep are silly creatures. They really are. And, and, and they get out in the field or, or out in the woods or, and, they, and they're not going anywhere in particular. But say there's a there's a little patch of grass over here, and it'll wander over, and it'll it'll eat the best out of it, and maybe there's a a little bit of ground over there that looks interesting, and it'll wander over there, and so step by step, not meaning to, not knowing where it's going, or or if it's even going anywhere, it goes and it goes and it goes, and and, and finally it finds out that it's it's quite a ways from you know where it should be on a, on this hillside uh and and then it then it starts to 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 bleat you know to cry and and it's it's the most helpless of creatures so it's, and and it's easily excited and and then it rushes around it finds some thorns and and sticker bushes and, and or it gets you know wanders into a swamp and gets uh, bogged down and it will never find its way back home unless somebody comes and finds it. And, and that's what Jesus is saying. He says, so, there are a great many of you that do not mean to go wrong. You're either not going anywhere in particular, or you don't start on your path with any intentions other, either way, either doing right or wrong, or keeping near God or going away from Him. But you're simply... You go where the grass is greenest, you know, where where the walking is the easiest, and and uh, you got away from him. So if we take that series of parables in Luke and we read the stories there, you'll see three different sides of given of the process by which a man's heart strays away from God. There's the sheep that wanders. Now this is partly conscious and, and voluntary but in in a larger sense it's just simply yielding to inclination and temptation then there's that uh, you know have you ever lost a, a coin you drop it and and, and you look at it, it's nowhere to be found uh, it, it, it may bounce under some furniture or, or you know uh, hide in plain sight on a, on a multicolored rug but that's kind of a picture of the manner in which we without meaning to uh, almost mechanically we slide into sin and disappears and gets covered over with that dust of evil and and then there's the worst of it all the, the boy that had the full knowledge of what he was doing I'm going off into a far country. I can't stand this any longer. All this restraint, no liberty, and no power of doing what I like with my own. Don't that sound like a lot of people today? And always obliged to obey and be dependent on my parents for my pocket money. <laughs> that does. It sounds a lot like people today. Give me what belongs to me for good and for all and let me go. That's the picture of the worst kind of wandering. When a person knows what he's about, and he looks at this, this restraint of the law of God and says, No, I, I'd rather be far away, and, and, and I'd be master of my own life, and, and I won't be confined with these limitations. The straying of the half-conscious sheep, may, it may seem more innocent, but it still carries this poor creature away from the shepherd as completely 
as if it had been carefully planned and from in an, an, in an intelligent and voluntary way. Well, what can we learn from this? In a, in a world like this, if a man don't know clearly where he's going, he's surely gonna go wrong. <laughs> Ain't it right? If you don't exercise a distinct determination to do God's will and to follow in His footsteps, if your main purpose is to get a soft bed and good food to eat, and, well, you're certainly, before long, you're going to wander tragically away from all everything that's right and pure and noble. It, it's not an excuse to say, I never meant it. I, I didn't intend any harm. I only followed my own inclinations. Well, m more trouble you can get in from one of thought than is wrought by an evil will. If the, if this sheep has strayed as as effectually though as it was set when it set out on its journey, it never thought of straying. Uh, people, young young men and young women begin life, you know, uh, and and they they don't know they don't you know you, you, that's why children need to be raised right. You got to tell them the right path. But then there's there's another thing that that we need to look at before we, we close. Now. There's a little, uh, some Bibles are different. Now, some Bibles say, and seeketh that which has gone astray. And I believe that the, the King James Version says, and seeketh that which is going astray. Now, look at the difference in the way these two are, are, are printed here. In, in, in the, in, uh, and seeketh that which has gone astray. Uh, which is which is the poorer translation? Uh, <clears throat> the process is represented as finished, where in the proper uh, revised version it reads, "And seeketh that which is going astray," which is the correct rendering. Uh, it's it's represented as going on or ongoing. Now. This is, this is our takeaway here, is this solemn, necessary, progressive character of our wanderings from God. A man never gets to the end of the difference that separates him and got him from God. If you think about that, you never get to the end of the distance that separates you from God if his face is turned away from God. Every moment that separation is increasing. Two lines, say, start from each other at an angle and diverge further apart from each other. The further they're, they're drawn out until the last one may well uh, be way up, you know, a way up by the side of God's throne and the other one way down in the deepest depths of hell. So this, this, uh, this text... Uh, carries with it a tremendous lesson. The sheep is not gone going astray. Now, there, there's some people who are every day, every hour, increasing the distance between themselves and the Father. Now, the last thing in this picture is the contrast between the description giving of the wandering sheep in our text and that in St. Luke. Here, it's, it's, it's represented as wandering, where there it's represented as lost. Now, this is a very beautiful meaning uh, that's not often noticed by casual readers of these two parables. Who is it that has lost it? Now, we talk about the lost soul and the lost man as if that man had lost himself. And that is true. And it's a horrible truth, isn't it? But that is not the truth that's talked about in this parable and that's meant for us to learn from. Who is it that has lost it? He to whom it belonged. Now that gives it a whole different meaning, doesn't it? It does. To paraphrase that, wherever a heart gets ensnared and entangled with the love of the treasures and pleasures of this life, 
and and he he just goes away from this allegiance and confidence and friendship from the living God there God the Father regards him as the poor by the loss of his children by the loss of one of his sheep now he doesn't care to possess you now this is an important point too by the hold that he has just because he created you and he's supreme and he rules that's not the way he wants to to hold you he wants you to love him and then he thinks he has you if you don't love him he thinks you have lost him or he, he thinks he has lost you now there's something in the divine heart that goes out after his lost property now these are deep things here and I'm sure that uh, you know like everything else in the Bible we could probably make a career out of trying to figure out all the little nuances of it but uh, oh wow okay uh, I didn't do it I don't think oh that's okay we got another one don't worry about it I like this look anyway um, so um, there's remember this that what looks like self-regard in a person is the purest love in God and, and that there's nothing that the whole revelation which Christianity makes of the character of God more wonderful than this that he judges that he's lost his child when his child has forgotten to love him you know now that's one of the great pictures in this text and, and but let's look at another one the picture of who's seeking who who's looking uh, now one form of this parable it was more distinctly the father and the other more distinctly as the son who is represented as seeking the sheep but do these two still coincide in substance in, in kind of the way that God's chief way of seeking us poor wandering sheep is through the work of, of Jesus and the coming of Christ is the father searching for his sheep in that cloudy and dark day now in these words of my text God leaves the ninety and nine and goes into the mountains where the wanderer is and seeks him so in a veiled form this is the greatest mystery of the divine love the incarnation and the sacrifice of Jesus now here's the here's the answer by you know in anticipation of the sarcasm that we often receive as evangelical Christians you must think a good deal of the human nature and must have a great arrogant notion that the inhabitants of this little speck that floats out in the great sea of the oceans you know if you suppose that with all these millions of worlds the divine nature came down upon this tiny little globe and and took your nature and died yes that's what Jesus said but not because man was so great not because man was so valuable in comparison to the rest of creation he was he was but one of, of 90 and 9 unfallen and unsinful but because he was so wretched because he was so small because he had gone so far away from God that 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 love came looking for him and would draw him to him to himself that I think is answer enough and then there's the difference between the two versions of this parable uh, in, in in the way that they represent the end of the seeking one says seeks until he finds you know that that that's a that's a good representation of the patient and incredible inexhaustibleness of the divine love God's long suffering uh, like a bloodhound who will follow the object of its search uh, you know just around every nook and cranny underneath anything until it comes to up to what it's looking for and, and not trying to be heretical there but so that 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 shepherd follows us through all them them little turns and and, and devious courses of our, of our wandering footsteps doubling back on ourselves until he finds us though that sheep may be going away from the shepherd 
that Shepard still follows. Yeah, don't don't tell the way I said that. Don't, that that's really a bad metaphor there. <laughs> uh, now, the farther away we get, the more tenderly he calls us, and the more that we stop our ears, the louder that voice gets with which he calls. Now, however we may have been going wrong, however far we've been wandering, however fervently we may be increasing, at every moment our distance from him, he is coming after us, and and he's lo- he's loving, and he's long suffering, and he won't be put away. You know, it, it's this is what we need to tell the lost that there's a loving living person that's really seeking them seeking uh you know by his gospel by his spirit and will be nev- never be satisfied till he's found them and in finding them and turning his soul to the, to him now there's a possibility of failure you know uh what an awful thing to think that you have the power of burying yourself in the grave by your own self-will and hiding yourself in the darkness of your own unbelief. See, we can frustrate this this love, this seeking of God. And, and some of us have done it. Some people do it all their lives and are proud of it. Some of us, uh, are, you know, are stealing their hearts against that softening that may be creeping over them you know, while you're witnessing to them. And, and this is what we have to do, is get them to yield to this seeking love and, and stop wandering so far away from him. And he has to come to find us. Now, he will restore their soul and carry them back on his shoulder, just like a sheep, or in his bosom, near his heart, to green pastures and that safe fold, and there will be joy in his heart, more than over those who have never wandered, and there will be joy in the heart of that, you know, wanderer, that returning wanderer, like they had never strayed and and never learned the misery from, you know, like there's a Jewish saying that has it, in the place where the penitents stand, the perfectly righteous cannot stand. God of heaven's army, we are living in challenging times when the enemy has convinced the people of this world that he does not exist and that you are a harsh God. Many people are rebelling against you because they don't understand who you are. God, help these lost souls to know your son Jesus so they can start worshiping you in truth. And dwell your Holy Spirit in them, God. Remove the in- evil influences from their lives that's blocking them from accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, I believe and pray. Amen.